Welcome, Maker Mentors, back to Real World Digital, where we help you bring computer science, engineering, and maker skills to the kids in your home or classroom. So, so far we've had a VR game that's not really so much of a game. We have the ability to teleport around, we have the ability to pick up a cool object, a ball, and toss it around, but there's really not too much interaction going on at the moment. So why don't we actually, in this video, dig in and really get into making our first game. This is going to be a simple carnival game that's built off of one of those simple milk jug toss games where you take the baseball and you chuck it at the milk cartons. I don't actually know what that game is called in carnivals. If you know, uh, tell me in the description. I'm actually really curious what this game is officially called. If these tutorials are helping you and you have any questions or comments or want to steer the direction of these videos, do let us know in the comments. Give this video a like if you want to follow on with this tutorial or anything else that has to do with computer science, engineering, or maker skills, do subscribe to our channel. We post twice a week. So let's get started. Right, so, so far we have a beautiful flat land and a ball. There's really not a whole lot going on here, so let's make this a little bit more interesting. Uh, to start off, let's clean things up. So right now, everything's kind of just named cube and sphere, so that's hard to tell what everything is. So we're gonna click on the cube, we'll rename this to the teleport area, because this is the area that we're teleporting around, right? Go to the other cube, We'll go over, that's the actual floor, so we'll name that floor, and sphere, uh, let's name that ball. Um, probably not much of a better name. Anyways, also we'll notice that the teleport area is a part of the floor. We want it to move around, so by clicking and dragging it under there, we nest the uh, teleport area to the floor. So as you can see, if we change the position of the floor, the tele merge together with the floor one object. So now we're going to create a new 3D object and it'll be a cylinder. And this is going to be the leg for our table. So I'm going to adjust it up a little bit and uh, get it so it's nice and level with the floor. Let's move the sun out of the way because it's kind of blocking what we're doing and because it's directly over our player let's move the table off to the side a little bit. Cool. So, let's zoom in a little bit and... Alright, now we're going to create the table top for our table. We're just going to make it out of a simple cube. We'll raise it up, move it off to the side here. And we'll adjust it so that it's on top of our table. Looks about good. Let's resize it and make it look a little bit more like an actual table. Beautiful. That's not so bad. All right, let's go take a look and see what it actually looks like in VR. So here I am. And where's my... Oh, that doesn't look nice. Okay, so we have a problem, right? This is why we try and try again. Obviously, our tabletop is not touching our table bottom, which is not good, so let's fix that. We also want it to be centered a little bit, so let's go ahead and lower that down just a little bit and move it around. Yeah, a little off to the right. Cool. Now, there's an easier way to do this. Now, if we nest it, remember before we said that the uh, floor will follow all of the objects that have nested under it. This also makes it have a nice place where we can see a coordinate system that jives with each other. So right now, the table top, its center is relative to the table legs center. So if I make its position zero, and I make its Z position zero, that will center the X and Y to the middle of the leg. Super easy, super convenient. Nice, let's go check that. And that's starting to look a little bit better. It's still a little bit big, but um, maybe we'll worry about that later. Let's flatten out that tabletop just a little bit. 
make sure that it's nested down just a little bit so that it looks like an actual table. Try it again. Now, as you can see, we're trying this over and over and over again. I don't magically know the numbers that are going to be right for this at the beginning. I'm just testing stuff. And that's why, that's where a lot of people tend to get it wrong, right? Let the kids, let yourself get it wrong a bunch of times because you're never going to be able to create something new if you're doing, expecting to get it right the first time. That's just not how engineering works. That's not how anything works. So try to make little improvements, little changes, and then test them, see if they work. The better you get at it and the more experience you have, the less tries you're going to have to do. You'll just kind of know it from experience. All right, here we have a table and a ball. And I here I thought I had the perfect proportions, but nope, I cannot actually reach that ball. That is great. So now we have to make our table just a little bit more small. Now I am inside the table, but we can throw the ball still, so that's good. So back in here, let us just make this table all that much more smaller. And notice by selecting the top level object, the table leg, which has table top nested underneath it, it will resize the entire thing, both objects. Cool. So this looks more like a usable table. I can reach the ball. I can chuck it. Sweet. We have our first beautiful piece of furniture inside our VR space. Congratulations, you're a carpenter, a virtual carpenter, which sounds really fancy, you can probably get paid more for. So we're going to make a copy of that table now that we know that it works. And this table is going to be our game table. The other table will be our ball table because it holds the ball. So this game table, we're just going to move off a little bit. When we copy an object, it places that object directly on top of the original. So if you copy something and paste it and it looks like it did not actually create a copy of it, it did. It's just physically inhabiting the exact same space. So cool. We now have a beautiful second table. Now let's put some game objects on it. I'm going to create a milk bottle style game. So the idea is that we're going to have the ball and we're going to chuck it at the other table that has a whole lot of milk bottles. So this is creating a new cylinder that is going to be our milk bottles. Now one of the problem is that we're going to have to create a lot of these milk bottles. And let's say I want to change something like the color. I don't want to have to change them all individually. So what we can do is make what's called a prefab. A prefab makes one master object that if we change an attribute of that master object, then it changes it for all of the objects of that type on our scene. How we do that is by clicking on it and then dragging it into our assets area. But I don't want it to be named cylinder, so why don't we name it something interesting first. This is going to be a bottle, so why don't we name it bottle. Now that it's that, we can click and drag it into our assets area and notice that it turns blue. That means there is a prefab. I can double click on it, go in and modify anything that I want about that prefab and it'll propagate those changes to everything. So let's make a couple more. Now, notice that when I made a bunch, it automatically incremented the number after it. Yeah, it looks pretty good, I think. Okay, so now we want these things to be able to react. So in order to do that, we have to tell Unity that it is a physical object in our world. How we do that 
is we'll select the prefab and we'll hit add component. From there, we'll type in rigid body. Rigid body says that this is a rigid body within Unity 3D. So it has physics attached to it. It has mass, it has gravity, all sorts of things, right? So that makes it so our bottles will react in the world just like. See? And they fall, kind of looks cool. I still can't grab them because I didn't have the grabbable object, but our ball on the other hand is a grabbable object. We should be able to toss it. Kind of far away, we'll solve that problem later. First, let's make the balls look a little bit better. So let's add a material. We'll start off with matte, so I know it's a material. Bottle, choose a nice little color. Yeah, blue maybe. Click and drag it onto the bottle. Ta-da. Let's try hitting those things with this ball. I cannot teleport with the ball. That's okay. We'll solve that problem later. Instead, let's move all of these objects a little bit closer. See if that looks about right. And that looks pretty good. Let's give it a shot. Grab the ball, chuck it. Boosh! Look at that. Awesome. We have made our first carnival game. And just like that, we have officially made our first actual game. Something that's kind of fun to play. Although it is a game, it is still fairly a simple game. There's no score, there's no interaction with the pins coming back and resetting itself. We basically just have to play the game once and then restart the game all over again. So in the next video in the series, we're going to be getting into how to tell programmatically the game that something has happened, such as when our bottles fall over, the computer should be able to recognize that and the game should be able to give us a score, maybe have the option to reset, all sorts of things. You know, behave like a game, which means in the next video, we get to get into some actual programming, which is super fun. We're going to be coding in a language called C Sharp. With that also, if you're caught up to this point and you haven't started making this game, go make the game. Sir, stop here, go download Unity, and get to this point. If you're teaching your kids this, or you're teaching this in a classroom, then you want to make sure that your kids are actually going off having some fun doing this. They can do a lot with just this, right? They can make an entire environment, put up blocks, all they want, have a bunch of uh, items that they can throw. Let them have fun, let them play around. That's the entire point of this, is to get them so they're comfortable very quickly getting in there and making a world that is all their own. If you have any questions or suggestions, do please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you want to see this tutorial go in a different direction or you really like what we're doing here, let me know. It really means a lot to help give guidance and direction to this channel. We're here to help you and your feedback helps us do that. And with that, I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time.